Hey everybody, welcome back to Tour vs. Tabak Book Club. I'm Andrew, your host, and I'm joined by my co-host, Josh. Hello there, Andrew. Hello. We are covering Book 5 in the Dark Tower series. We're starting it off. It's called Wolves of the Kala by Stephen King. Um, again, as it is with our other episodes, we do treat this as like a, almost like a real book club discussion. We are going to talk about spoilers. So if you haven't read part one in the prologue of Wolves of the Kala, we do implore you to go back and do that. Otherwise, you will hear some spoilers. We're just going to mainly kind of talk about the things that we thought were interesting or we thought was funny. We're not necessarily going to touch on every single detail. But if there is something, you know, we don't cover and you'd like us to talk about it, maybe in, in, in the next video, just let us know and we can evaluate it and talk about it. But we're going to kind of stick to what we thought was interesting. Yeah. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about with this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Stephen King, we've talked about his obsession with phalluses, a.k.a. penises. We've talked yes. about his obsession with other weird things he's he's uh he's De quite the man demon rape yeah demon rape monsters gore he's kind of gay Mo monster rape yeah um but <laughs> i think we have a new one to talk about stephen king's obsession with huge women he likes huge women huge women because <laughs> i know <laughs> book 4.5 the book the book we covered last time wasn't it was written after all these books, but he talks about a very large woman there, and then we open with another large woman. <laughs> like, was that foreshadowing? So when like when four point <laughs> five came out, when he after the whole thing was he like, oh, I need to foreshadow the, these big breasted, yeah, thick man. women, farmer Jeez. women. Yeah, dude. You know, I don't so blame him. He likes the. He likes big women. Nothing wrong with that. He does. Nothing wrong, Nothing wrong with that. Hey, hey. Likes each, dick. Each to their own. Likes dick. Say, likes big women. Yeah. That's a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's more of them because we learn later on that the, you know, we'll get into it obviously, but the wolves, they do something to the children and then they come back and they just become large for some reason. So Yeah. How um, How'd you... How do you feel about this opening? So, going from four point five uh, to to this book, uh, how did you like the opening? Like, because it starts off, you know, in the farming village, mm -hmm. and and we get the robot comes and is like, "They're coming, they're coming," <laughs> yeah. And then all the farmers, you know, are just like, "Oh shit!" So it's like, I thought I liked it. What were your thoughts on that? I liked it a lot. I love the Andy character, the robot. He's one of my favorite characters so far in this section. He gives me, like, Shimi energy, the d mentally disabled guy from oh, yeah. book, uh, oh my god, book three, three Wizard and Glass, yeah. Kind of reminds me that? of Shimi. No, that was book four. Oh, book four, okay. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Shimi because he's, like, I mean, he's a robot, so obviously he's not, like, an organic person, but he has kind of the same social awkwardness that shimi had so i enjoy him a lot but yes the wolves are coming what did you I, think yeah you said you like this section though <clears throat> yeah i think i think the setup was great honestly for the for this book because well so if we're just going in like the way stephen king wrote you go from like four uh where it ends with the uh, the you know the randall flag and the castle and then they head off into their next journey mm -hmm. and so then this book starts off kind of like how do i explain kind of like how empire strikes back in a way it feel feels like like i feel like this is the book where it's gonna start getting darker uh even, even i mean i know the story's already dark you know because it's stephen king but this is like the pivotal point in the story where we have a lot of the character developments done or, or or they've changed a lot since the first book so we're now put in a situation where uh, they will pot potentially have to actually show off a lot of their skills that they have been training for or developed this whole time because most of the time it's Roland doing most of the work with Eddie and Susanna doing stuff here and there yeah now when I when I mean that I'm talking about like actually shooting things mm -hmm. uh, like we did see Eddie and Suzanne do a lot of it earlier on too, but they like weren't as good of, at at it. 
And so I feel like with this opening showing that there's these these wolves with a cow, very dangerous, are going to attack this village, and we already know our Kata is going to have to face off against them. So this this is a part where we finally get to see uh, where everyone stands. Like, how far have they developed since we first saw them? And this is going to, to me personally, this feels like it's going to be the first big test to see how good a gunslingers they are compared to Roland. Yeah, and to that point, uh, kind of d- talking about the wolves a little bit more in detail, um, I kind of wanted to talk about the cover, too. Obviously, we get a description in written words, too, but the wolves are on the cover, at least of the audiobook that we've been listening to. Um, if you haven't had a chance to like look that up and you're listening to this and you're interested, I would look it up just because I think it's cool. But the they have crazy weaponry, right? Like this test that you're describing that they're going to go up against, they're pretty... Uh, technologically advanced like they have light swords that basically look like lightsabers yep um they have flying machines they have guns they have a lot of guns they all wear masks and they all ride gray horses so at least up until this point obviously we've experienced you know really high technology with like blaine the mono but um not like just the average bandit i guess like having all this weaponry so it's definitely interesting that they're so technologically advanced and like you said it's going to be a really cool test to see them face off against what sounds like a group of people who are also very skilled at killing yeah so. that's why it's stephen king made a universe that's really unique because we basically have a bunch of futurist technology that is either seen as magic myth and, and legend but with our knowledge, it could be like, oh, these, this robot or something was probably made a long time ago. We don't know how long, but long enough for it to still be working. Uh, but it was probably made by just some company that does just some basic shit, you know? But to everybody else, it's just like, oh, like it's been left here by the past creators or, or whatever the hell. And so Stephen King's, like, the universe he's making is very interesting because it just brings in this old ancient technology that's supposed to be super advanced and dwindling into this uh, dying world. And it's the, and at the beginning of this intro, we do get that reinforced once again with the Wolves of the Kala, with this robot against just the mundane life, lives of all these farmers. Yeah, definitely. And talking about, yeah, there's there's obviously some advanced technology, and then there's obviously some magic as well. It's it's a blend of many different genres. Um, speaking of, of the magic, <laughs> I can't yeah. remember exactly when this scene happened, but I think it was when the villagers were like watching them from the bushes or whatever, but they, they bring up again how that demon could have fucked Jake to death again. Oh, uh, <laughs> my God, yeah. Yeah. Was, um, just hilarious, honestly. Yeah, I actually, like, on the audiobook, you can save clips, and I actually clipped it. Yeah. Uh, it is super funny. It's just, Roland's just, they're just like, yeah, remember that demon? And Roland's like, yeah, if I didn't do it, it probably would have fucked you. Would have fucked Jake. Would have fucked him to death. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, all right, cool. I I'm mean, like, it's not so the worst I, way to I go. Started, you know? It's like I shouldn't be laughing because it's supposed to be serious, but it's like out of nowhere. You're just at work, right? You're just listening to the <laughs> audio book, and it's like, yeah, remember that demon? Remember that demon, Roland, before the mines? And Roland's like, yeah, if I didn't fuck it, it probably would have found you, seduced you, and fucked you to death. <laughs> and, and everyone else around the campfire is like, oh, okay. That before, before or after, it must have been before you dropped him in the mine yeah. <laughs> off the cliff. I mean, I think it's funny, because he could have just said Jake could have died. He didn't have to say the part about him fucking him to death. Yeah. (laughs) So. um, I I was talking to my sister about this, too, because she listened to some of the first Dark Tower book with me. And she's just like, she feels very uncomfortable with the way how Jake almost always gets raped or every book or, kid, or kidnapped every, every book. single book it's, something is mentioned yeah he's a little 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 squint cunt. yeah a little squint <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man so it, it's uh it's really funny but then also touching up on jake 
So we know he has the touch that it was a Len, all right? Roland's friend Len that had it. Yes. That had the touch. So the touch is obviously the shining. And to be honest, okay, here's a question for you. Do you like the term the the touch or the shining better? Um I think the shining is more unique. So, I think it would make I guess I don't really I guess I'm kind of indifferent honestly. It doesn't really matter to me either way. I don't know why he calls it the touch in this series compare in comparison. But how, how do you well, feel about it? Well, I def I like the term the shining better, but I'm not going to deny that it might be biased. I might be biased because I love horror movies. Yeah. And one of my first horror movies that I ever fell in love with love with was The Shining. Right. And I, I've also read the book, and I haven't read Doctor Sleep yet, so I need to read. You know, we we just need to read all of these together. But <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, but like, yeah, I mean, I understand why they call it the Touch in this universe. It kind of, I kind of like how Stephen King switches things up a bit because it's like, it's like, oh, like. I know what that is, and the only reason I know what that is is because I've read other Stephen King books, and you know right, he, yeah. he has a whole multiverse. So it's uh, I, I feel like it's interesting, and not every world uh, needs to have like the same terms for literally everything. I mean, that doesn't sound. I mean, that doesn't. I don't think that'd make much sense to be honest. If it did, yeah. Uh, but anyway, Jake has the touch. Is he? You know, is is he stronger with the with the shining than other Stephen King characters? Uh, who's who's to know? Yeah. Yet, who's to know? We'll find out once we read every single book of Stephen King. So we'll <laughs> let you know. We'll do a tier list. Yeah, we'll do a tier list. Who's the strongest with the touch slash shining? <laughs> but well, um, kind of. We kind of have like a, a sequence of just like remembering events that happen. We are reminded that Jake could have been fucked to death, and then they do. They have the toe dash, and uh, Eddie remind rem remembers how his brother's head got thrown into the room when they were like shooting at Balazar. Yeah. It's like Jesus Christ. That's what I I really like about this book so far is that we're it's acknowledging past events. Yeah. So that the story feels more complete. So it's. It feels it's like one co one whole story, and so when they reference stuff like that, I'm like, oh, that that's cool. That happened. Let's see, this is book five. I'm counting four point five too. So it's like one, two, three. It's like three. Uh, no, that was the second book. Yeah, I think Holy it was a drawing of the three. Yeah, second. Yeah, book. I was drawing the three. Yeah, so it's like that was quite a long time ago. So I like how, and especially how these books, when when they're being written and published, I like. I like the callbacks yeah. because it, it makes the journey worth more. It feels better. Like it's worth it because you're getting, I don't even know how to, how to describe it. It's just, it feels good knowing that the other books are acknowledged as well. It makes you feel like you've come a long way. Like you've accomplished a lot by, by tagging along with them. And it's like, wow, I've been along with this, this quartet for a long time now. It feels like, so it just, it feels good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you think back to the scene where he was fighting Balazar with Roland, and it's it seems like naked. forever. Yeah, naked. <laughs> and he mentions that again. I was like, oh no, most people wouldn't want to fight naked. But um, it yeah, it shows how far they've come. Like their relationships together, how much Eddie has grown, how much Roland has grown, how much the rest of the Cotet has grown since like the drawing happened. So it's been. It's yeah, like you said, it's cool to kind of reminisce on the journey that's happened so far. Um, yeah. And on top of that, we have another fun Stephen King moment where uh, Balazar and then one of the guys with Balazar uh, they shake down that riddle store owner, and then the crony is like, "Don't worry, he won't lose his uh, his butthole virginity." So yeah. <laughs> um, just just unprompted, like wasn't unprompted. related to it at all. Was just. <laughs> Stephen King. Yeah, made me laugh. It's Stephen King. Like you said, I mean, I'm usually I listen to this when I'm at the gym, and it's just <laughs> <there's>, yeah. <laughs> when these lines happen, you're and of course we're listening to an audiobook, so I just hear it in my head, and the narrator has to like say it out loud. It's just hilarious. Yeah. 
And it's like when they're going into the the dream world too. Now that now you mentioned this, and it's like uh, it reminds me a little bit about a Wheel of Time, their whole dream sequence. Yeah. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not gonna go too in depth in that for people who haven't read Wheel of Time. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, it definitely plays off of more of like I know in the previous book they talked about how they can kind of uh, listen to each other's thoughts a little bit because there's such a strong quartet. And now when they go in this like toe dash thing or whatever this, I don't even know what to call it. Just a strong dream. Um, they 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 can still like sense each other and they're kind of in the dream together. So it's cool yeah. for sure. Well, that's why that's why I said like related to the wheel of time a bit. Yeah, no, like, definitely. They're because in this book it's like they're the, they're in the other world, but it's not like a dream world. Like they're kind of like a weird phantasm like a ghost ish type presence where people uh unconsciously sense them and walk around them so they're like they're f not physically there but they're like spiritually there so uh i wonder if this is like confirmation in stephen king's universe that souls exist yeah yeah i could see that I so like is that. uh because then in, like when roland is like up because he's watching Susanna, which we will get into uh -huh. in just a moment. <laughs> but he's like watching, uh, watching uh, Jake and and uh, Eddie go through their toe dash thing, and he's like, he can see them like where they are, like out of their bodies and stuff. And it's just like, oh, this is, well, this is wild. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, yeah. Obviously, during that time, uh, the people are watching them from afar, and so Roland's like, I don't know if I want to leave them yet but what so far in this book even even up to this point we've been getting a lot of the number 19 right and so there's like there's a lot of exposition plot going for the overall story so it's like the wolves of the kala is like the a plot and then the b plot is the overarching story of the dark tower mm -hmm. and so we're getting a lot of a lot more B plot in this book than we have in any other of the books. So, yeah, um, I, yeah I it's agree. a lot to go through. Uh, what, what did you? What do you think about the whole nineteen thing th thus far, and the dream sequences? Yeah, it keeps showing that, and then obviously I I wrote a note, but we'll kind of bring it up later on with like Eddie bringing that. Does he brings that up as well? I'm pretty sure, like later in this section, but um. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what it means to be honest. It, if if it's a reference to another Stephen King book, or if, if we've talked about it somewhere else in this series, but I honestly I don't even really know what it means other than what Eddie was kind of insinuating later in this section about it being like a simulation almost. But what yeah. do you what do you think it is? Well, I guess we can wait on my final thoughts for that till we get to that section okay. because. Uh, yeah, we'll, do, we'll wait a little bit longer. Okay. Well, we can talk about Susanna's new personality. <laughs> uh, so, right. every Stephen King book has a line that's just disgusting or disturbing <laughs> to me that burns into my brain. In the last book, it was when they were uh, on the boat and the dude pulls the spider eggs out of his chest cavity and throws them. That just yeah. burned in my brain. In this one, it's when... Mia, which is the new evil personality of Susanna, just pops leeches into her mouth like candy while she's yeah. naked. I was like, oh my god. god it so, just burns so, my brain. <laughs> she's so and then the way the way Stephen King describes it, right? So Susanna is going through this like like uh swampish kind of creek area, right? And she gets her wheelchair to a point takes off all her clothes and Roland's following her yeah. and she's like crawling on the ground like eating animals raw and like squeezing frogs and getting their blood and guts everywhere and so she's like eating all these raw animals going nuts and like saying random shit uh, because Susanna is like in, a, in her own dream right now and she's like in the past uh, and she has legs and she's walking around but do we is it Susanna or is it the new one Maya or Mia, or whatever it is, but uh, what was this? The Stephen King section in this for me in this little part 
was when he was like rolling it was like even though it's been a long time he like saw her body and how like hard her nipples were and stuff and was like, oh, well, but, that, but that's eddie's girl so yeah. he's, like, he's like he's not gonna do anything because you you know because he's rolling you know he's a fucking man so he's not gonna let lust overpower him <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he, uh. so i thought that part was really funny yeah true but, uh, there's a little bit of but, sexual uh, tension yeah. yeah between them in this section yeah so going. far this this so far in this book there's been a little bit of tension between them i feel like but yeah definitely. not not really from Susanna's side mostly from a little bit from roland or at least it kind of feels like it yeah but but it, i think this confirms that uh the baby's not eddie's remember no. in book three when Susanna raped the demon yeah so it's it is definitely a demon baby, which we've seen in book one when Roland just before he killed that entire village. Oh yeah, I forgot about the, that. The dark, yeah, the dark man impregnated some some chick, and Roland stuck the barrel of his gun up her hoo ha and was like, "I'll blow your demon baby to shit if you don't tell me where the dark man went." God damn it. <laughs> it's like. It's <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, callback, yeah, so just a bunch of callbacks in this section. It's a bunch of, bunch of callbacks, and then so it's like, what do you think about that? I well, actually, I'll give my opinion yeah. after, but like, what do you think about Susanna's baby being a demon? Yeah, man, it's uh, I think this is the most interesting plot point to me in the whole section is that we now know that you know, Susanna absolutely has a, a demon baby, um. And that it generated a new personality that Suzanne is not aware of. And it, it just it's it makes you feel bad for her because it's like, man, she just overcame her dissociative identity disorder in the other book where she had that Odetta, you know, personality and it was consuming her and, and it was a horrible side of her. And she's able to grow past that. And then she grows past that, has this, you know, rape thing with the demon and immediately... <laughs> has to bear a demon baby and and generates a new personality so she's once again like a prisoner of her own mind so it's it's kind of rough um but it's definitely really interesting because you know roland knows it um but he's choosing to kind of wait and see instead of like bringing it up um and there's you know several opportunities for him to kind of bring it up so it's weird that he's waiting. I guess we'll see why. Um, but I think that I think this is the most interesting plot point, in at least in my view. But what did you think? I I would agree with you that like for a for a C plot, it's probably definitely one of the best C plots I've ever seen. But just just because it's like it's just interesting. It's like you can't just like like. Let's say you're gonna go watch a TV show. The last thing that that you think is gonna happen on that TV show is that the woman who raped a demon is now pregnant with the demon baby, and it's like she's eating frogs and shit. It's like yeah. you're not gonna get you're not gonna get that anywhere else. But Stephen, King no so. man. <laughs> I mean, we've seen in horror yeah. films and stuff like you know people getting pregnant yeah. with demons or whatever. Um, but yeah, like the 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 sheer like intensity of this pregnancy and like the sheer just disturbing nature of the pregnancy just amps it up to a stephen king level because like we talked about just her eating frogs squeezing them until they blow up and then eating them popping yeah. leeches in her mouth squirming on the ground like a snake yeah like all this stuff that's just very graphic yeah. so yeah that's like i agree with you i think roland doesn't want to say anything yet because not only is Susanna not aware of it but eddie is a very uh like he's mature but he's not like very emotionally mature so by telling him like news like this he thinks eddie will like flip out and shit and he's like he doesn't need eddie flipping out right now he's just kind of gonna wait and then besides if like if roland went and said something and eddie's the one who's closest to her he's like eddie sh if eddie loved her he should know uh, he should he should know this way before me, but then he's like, oh, that, I shouldn't think like that, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so there's just a lot a lot of implication, like a lot of it's just a lot of drama. Roland's just like doesn't want to deal with right now, especially since they're like 
not that they're lost because they're heading on the beam, but now they got the wolves of the Kala. Uh, and yeah, there's just a, just a lot of other shit going on. So it's like Roland's yeah. just trying to play his cards right and play it safe. But I think by playing it safe, it's going to be a double edged sword because once they find out Roland knew all along, because yeah. I fucking bet you as soon as Eddie finds out, he's going to be like, if this took me this long to figure it out, how long have you known, Roland? And he's Roland's going to say something, and Eddie's going to be like, you son of a bitch. I thought we've, we've been through this before, a couple books ago, to where you're not going to hide shit from me anymore. You're going to tell me how it is, because you see us as equals. So it's going to bring in a little more drama, because Roland didn't say anything. Yes. Uh, I, I completely agree. There's there's a lot of moving cogs right now that are all pretty interesting. And, uh, so, yeah, it's definitely going to break. I, I can definitely see there be a breakdown of trust over this issue when it comes to light. Because, obviously, it, there's going to be a point where either she can't hide it anymore or the demon baby's going to get born. So, you know. Yeah. So, neat. Neat. Demon I babies so I, so I, so and so leeches. Yes. So I'd say out of a uh, for a C plot, I give it a ten out of ten. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> super interesting to me uh, and how it'll wrap into this story because obviously, uh, this uh, <laughs> there's a lot of other shit going on, like you said, where we got to deal with a lot of other stuff, um, including. Eddie taking a dump. <laughs> yes, Eddie. Eddie loves taking. Dumps. Yeah, I just wrote this note because I thought it was hilarious. Because I and also I just love Andy because he was taking a shit and then Andy just comes up behind him while he's just watching him taking a shit <laughs> and he's like, yeah. "Hey, don't wipe your ass with that. It's poison." Yeah, it's just hilarious. <laughs> Imagine just shitting in the woods and a robot comes up behind you, just watching you take a shit and <laughs> talks to you in the darkness. You're like, oh fuck. That's like. Yeah. This is this is such an Eddie moment. Like I feel like this scene only works because uh, because it's Eddie. Like if the same yeah, thing happened yeah. to Jake, Susanna, or Roland, <laughs> then you know it wouldn't be as funny. But since yeah. it has to do with Eddie, Eddie's the perfect Cuthbert kind of guy. Yeah, to, he's, like, he's the comic <laughs> pull relief. Off, pull yeah. off this. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, we do get a lot of lore from it too. So like, yeah. Uh. So like before this, you know, finally, the the other like the cow the people of the Kala come to confront them. They talk for a bit about uh, stuff, and then Roland takes the what's the guy's name Eisen not Eisenhower but it's like <laughs> E Hoover some some bullshit it's something like uh, that yeah uh, yeah so he he's trying he he's not gonna convince him like he's like I'm not here to convince anybody but you know he'll talk to him uh, we get. The other guy from the other book and all stuff. So like they're they're all spreading around. Susanna's making tea. Jake's playing with Oi and a boy. Oi and a, oh, Oi and hmm. a boy. All right, anyway. playing so, with a boy. Stephen King's favorite. Dude, right? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So so yeah. So this when we get to the plot, this is where it's like Eddie's like, okay, who are the who are the wolves of the Cala? Uh, what do they want? When did they come here? And like all this stuff. And Andy's like. Beep boop beep beep boop, right. and then it gets to a point where his his uh, sarcastic kind of pompous ass voice, according to Eddie, uh, ceases, and we get kind of like a cold natural robot voice that yeah. is pretty, like a basic robot voice, and he's just like, "What's the password? Password? This shit's restricted." And Eddie's like, "Oh fuck!" So. Do you, what do you think? What what do you think about this park? Obviously, Eddie doesn't know the password, so they we have no information. Yeah, definitely makes it clear that Andy is somehow related to the wolves, or at least knows information about the wolves. Um, so makes him a little bit more of an important character rather than just like kind of. I mean, Shimi was important too, I suppose, towards the end as well. So I think you know Andy will. They'll have to figure out how to get that information at some point or, or find out how he's related, but it definitely makes him more important as a character, I think. So like I don't I don't think we're ever gonna get the information out of him. And here here's why is cause one of the the conversation Eddie has with Roland, like after this, 
and he starts talking to him about how how like they seem to like follow a formula that's like kind of like a story you know it's like it's like we it's real to us but it's also not real our dream is real but it's also not real it's like how can we there's stuff that i know to be real but also doesn't feel real and so and then he does he's like yeah he's like we're gonna fight the wolves of kala people are probably gonna die the that's real we're gonna cry that's gonna be real and you know and mourn and you know we're gonna move on with our day it's like all of that is real but it also is not real that doesn't make any sense like do you know what i'm feeling and i feel like this is one of the first steps we're gonna get into this is my prediction is that this whole dark tower story is just gonna be a big metaverse type thing like before meta became the like the thing the stephen king is gonna be his meta because he's like I feel like this is a, a, a stepping stone into being like, yeah, this is all just a story. And Roland, when he figures it out at the end, is just going to be given like a happy ending because he did it. He figured out what what all this was. And it was just Stephen King being like, yeah, I'm I'm just a writer and you're not real. So... <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely uh explain the controversial ending then that people view it <laughs> if, if my it's because you know it says like half people i think i forget what what the percentage that i looked up was but i think at least like half the people were like eh, and then the other half were like hell yeah and so i think i think the meta thing that's where i think the story is going but i could be wrong could be wrong. That's just my prediction. It, and then, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, what do you what do you think about that? If if you thought about it at all, we're gonna get into it more, obviously, as we get towards the end of this section here. Um, but yeah, it definitely feels more, yeah, kind of meta and like like you're describing more like bong hit, uh, fucking <laughs> multiverse, <laughs> um, type type stuff where it's like what is the universe what is what is you know what's reality um it's, it's definitely like feeling more like that in this section in particular we've had other sections in the other books where they kind of go that route as well um but it hasn't been like that lately but yeah this section definitely feeling that energy for sure so what kind it of it reminds stuff? me about the ending in the first book where Roland the Dark Man's like, let me show you yes. the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like Aladdin. Yeah. Um it, it's yeah. Uh, do, you, do you trust me? Yeah, do you trust me? Do you trust me? <laughs> Most um, toxic thing to ever say to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> trust me. Let it trust me. I'm trusting you. Don't, you don't trust me? Yeah. The fuck? I'm the dark man. Hmm. Drop the boy. Do you trust me? All right. Well, anyway, yes, uh, I agree with you, though. <laughs> yeah. So you think? Do you think it's gonna go the meta route, or it do you, definitely? Do you think it's not? It definitely been set up to be that way. Definitely been set up to be the like, what is the universe? What is reality? This is just a story type. This is a simulation type. Well, you know the type the first time they went in the dream, and they they went to the bookstore. Uh, on the thing, it mentioned Stephen King's books when it was going yeah, through the authors. It did. So there's another uh, there's another hint most I could, likely. I could definitely see it going down that route. It, we've had inklings of it throughout the series, but yeah, this section for sure is dripping with it. What's uh what's the next what's the next I thing did you, Yeah, you know? so I wanted to talk about the scene just cuz I thought it was badass, but the scene where like Jake Roland, Susanna, Eddie, all of them, they're like, the council's like questioning if they're gunslingers, and then they just throw the plates in the air and like shoot them all and then like catch the shards, like making oh, a yeah. plate again. I was like, that's so cool. Because that part was badass. But it's, it's, uh, it goes back to your earlier point of like, this is the real test. Like, they gotta shoot, they gotta show out. Like, you can shoot plates all day, but like, you gotta sh you gotta do the real thing. Like we gotta see you like shoot, you know the wolves and stuff. So it made me excited for that. This and, uh, yeah, so, oh sorry. No go. Ahead. So, 
Th this was a scene, so before we even started the Dark Tower series, when I told my manager that we're going to be reading it, mm -hmm. uh, this is this is the scene he told me about. So I didn't, I this is, I didn't tell you about it on purpose because I didn't know when it would happen and it sounded super badass. So it's like, it didn't spoil it for me, but I was kind of like anticipating this moment for five books. Oh my god! So <laughs> this is the yeah. This is the scene he remembers. That's interesting. Yeah, because like he he read the whole you know obviously he he read the whole series. Yeah. And he told me about this scene, uh, because I know I'm like we're gonna read it, but I wasn't like, I was like yeah it's probably you know Stephen King. And then he told me about this part, and I'm like you know what this is probably gonna be some badass shit. So, and I was not disappointed. Even so, even though I knew the scene. Like, because he told me every single bit of it, so it's like, it's, I even knew the scene, but that didn't take that didn't take away the impact I had from it at all. And honestly, it it heightened it even better because I was like, oh fuck, I know exactly what's, you know. Yeah. But well, also, it, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'll say, but also it may have been nice to figure it out by myself <laughs> and go through it. So, from my point of view, for already knowing the scene, just not knowing when it was going to happen. It was still very much satisfying, and I, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I of like the it. scenes to tell you about, this one's not horrible, I guess. Yeah, to tell like you it's, about, like it's badass, but it's not like spoiler. Yeah, it's not know? like a heavy spoiler or anything. I thought it was really cool that we saw Jake participate in it too, and he's almost as skilled as the other ones, and he's like a kid. So, I mean, we've seen Eddie and Susanna, they're obviously super skilled, but now that Jake is, like, skilled, has the shining, I mean, this dude's a badass, so it was pretty cool. I'm excited for the, like, actual fighting to, to start, but... Isn't it interesting that every book, Jake gets, like, almost, either almost raped or is mentioned about getting, like, raped or touched or yeah. something, and he has the touch... <laughs> <laughs> what does that what does that tell you <laughs> yeah honestly that's a good point <laughs> and the mutants thrusted at jake's legs <laughs> while jake screamed for uh, rolling now i mean yeah. now he seems like he's a badass so i hope he can just defend himself now from being inevitably right. uh have a rape attempt but you know <laughs> it's uh that's not funny no, i'm just kidding <laughs> all right but yeah like all right like I hope Jake stays safe. Yeah. Oh, uh, and the wolves of the Kala aren't human, apparently. So okay, yes. So I don't know what the fuck they are, dude. I have no idea. I, I they're really interesting to me. I'm excited to like learn more about them, but we'll kind of get into that, I guess. But yeah, this, they kind of yeah, good. But it's just like they kind of remind me of like this is Stephen King's version of like orcs. Yeah, definitely. It's the first, like you said, it's the first real test. Um, yeah. Now that they're all like legit gunslingers, it's the real test. Some cake gunslinger. Yeah, I can have a have a blabber. blabber gunslinger. Have a blabber. Okay. But um, cool. This is the note I had about uh, the whole simulation thing. You know, Eddie brings up how the number nineteen is everywhere. He's like, this whole thing might not really be real like there's something weird about everything and he tells roland about it but uh what what were your thoughts on that so what's interesting about the number 19 is so we get call callahan's the guy is he's like the old priest dude right with the yes he has cross, the church and the, the the ball he has the yeah the, it's number 13 right the black ball or whatever yeah, yeah. so callahan you know the guy from what book? What book is he from? The other Stephen King book. I can't even remember. Can't remember. Well, yeah. anyway, so he's from. Uh, he mentions it. Ah, fuck it. I can't remember. Anyway, so he's from another Stephen King book. Ended up in here. And oh wait, yeah, he's from his... New York too, or he's not from New York. Yeah. but he's from the 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 modern world. Yeah, right? yeah, like and, he, his... and he got put in this world too. But yeah. yeah. Go ahead. He he lived in New York for a little bit. Yes. I think this. Yeah. I think his story takes place in Maine. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I haven't read the the book that he's in, but I'm pretty sure it takes place in Maine. Okay. But uh, yeah. but we know that his 
middle name is like Frank or whatever. So his initials spell 19. So, oh. and what's interesting is now I'm thinking, okay, Stephen King wrote that other book before this book. Mm-hmm. So in that book, we probably don't get a middle name of him in that book. I mean, I don't know for sure, but cause I'm like, think about all this planning is Stephen King found, he's like, okay, I, I want this character from my other book to show up in this world. In this world currently, everyone's obsessed with 19. All right. So here's what his first and last name uh, count to. So if I have them, everything else going to 19, what middle name do I got to give him to give it 19? So that's kind of like the thoughts, because there's no way he's like already thought of this guy's full name being 19 characters before this book. Like, I just can't believe that. Yeah, no, (laughs) for sure. Yeah. But, uh, what does 19 mean? Is that 19 different levels on the Dark Tower? Is it 19 different books, main books that's connected to? Because uh, even Callahan's full name is not the only one with 19. There's also the the farmer guy, uh, e-, e. Howard. Uh-huh. Not Eisenhower, but yeah. But he's, his name also, I think, goes up to 19. There's 19 books in the bookstore. There's 19 in the clouds. Like it's in the turtles in the clouds too. So right, it's just like yeah. it's. I honestly have no idea what the fuck 19 is gonna mean, but I wonder if it has something to do with like someone who's who knows more about Stephen King would probably know, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid I'm not looking up any theory videos. So. Right. <laughs> but I'm just being honest, like, I have no idea. Dude, I, yeah. I have no idea either. Um, I'm, Yeah, either it'll become apparent in this book or, yeah, we'll maybe down the line we'll read another Stephen King book and be like, oh, shit, okay, that's what the 19 means. Yeah. It, for- well, it even- like foreshadowed whatever was going to happen, but, um, yeah. yeah. And what do you think about the whole, like, the whole complicated uh, B plot, which is, like, the main, main plot about them, like, getting money from Susanna's timeline to buy the plot, the lot. Yeah. And Jake's timeline yeah. uh, that has this rose that sings a beautiful song that of, of love. And and then Balthazar wants the lot. And and I know that is the most simplified yeah, right. explanation <laughs> you're gonna get because they go fucking hard explaining this, and I'm like at work, and I'm like I can't remember. <laughs> every, that's what this every section single plot point. That's what I'm saying, man. This this section in particular, like, definitely gives me like the bong hit uh, energy, where it's like. He's going to buy the plot, but we need to buy the plot because the flower's there. The flower is also the Dark Tower. It's representation of the Dark Tower. We need to buy the plot. We need to get the money from Susanna, and then we can buy the plot. But Balazar's trying to, like, it's just so much shit. And it's all happening in, like, separate universes, too. Like, because, like, they have yeah. this Wolves of the Callow universe. Then they have this weird Toadash New York City universe. And then there's the flower with the Dark Tower, and, yeah, so... But I think you it's, you said it correctly there. That was the best way to <laughs> the simplified yeah. way. <laughs> I, I'm not, talk I'm about not that. going. Yeah, I'm we're not, not going to go into the into fucking no, detail. Sorry. Yeah, they, gonna, they just need wanna, they need you, to buy the plot to keep the flower alive at this point. Yes. So uh, that's all. That's all you need to know. And and the gateways like so everyone else is like, yeah. I mean this. Yeah, we could do this. We just got to go through, find a portal, go through Susanna's timeline. So uh, easy. Come back. But but we got but we got to go back to a timeline that's not. Uh, but when we go back to Susanna's time, it can't be like too far ahead or too far behind. It has <laughs> yeah. to maybe be within a couple months so that it's like, oh, you found her. Okay, we can get it. Uh, but then when we get the money, then we got to go through Jake's timeline. But we have to do it during a certain amount. It can't be t- like a year past jake's timeline because then balthazar will buy the lot and destroy the flower and all that. <laughs> but it can't be it can't be too soon because if it's too soon then the mr tower might not want to sell the plot of land and he's only <laughs> going to sell it to balthazar because he can't hold it 
and it's like it's it, and then Roland's just like you're you're saying this like it's gonna be easy dude I've I'm old as fuck and the only the first time I ever saw a portal was when I got you guys through the doors <laughs> <laughs> he's like before that I knew about the thinnies but like yeah he's like it's so rare and you're talking about it like like it's nothing and so that cracked me up because it's, it's like, just yeah <laughs> it's a, it's like yeah it um and it really yeah no no go ahead sorry i was like i'm really now nah, this is the book where i'm really starting to feel roland's age because i like they always said he's like an old old man but i never really felt that uh up until this book yeah. and because it's not only like does his hip hurts and he's like he's he just feels like slower and old like he like he's not I, I don't really know how to explain it. I think it is the voice actor that does a better job in this book at signifying or like making me feel how old Roland is compared to the other books. Because the other books I felt he was more like maybe late forties, mid fifties, but just had a worn torn body. But now I'm getting to the point where I feel like he's like 59 and in his early 60s. But yeah. then Roland's like, I'm thousands of years old. And I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, dude. So it's 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 there. Yep. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about that? The dude's fucking old. He's old, no, yeah. old as fuck. And he can still fuck demons, dude. He fuck <laughs> and he can still keep them from fucking Jake to death damn right except for susanna susanna has, has to rape the demon yes. on her own yeah she she yeah she didn't get any help with that one she didn't get, well, <laughs> and she's continuing <laughs> to not get any help <laughs> she, she got she got emotional support roland was there holding her shoulders he's like you can do it, do it for jake do it for eddie you can do it <laughs> and, yeah. and susanna's just like fuck you roland fuck you eddie i don't give a fuck about jake and then she's like you know what fuck it fuck you demon <laughs> the right. rape like i honestly that was probably my out of the whole dark series so far that's probably my favorite moment is because what a fucking boss ass move she's just yeah Susanna, no she's, a she's just like she's like you know what if i have to do this anyway fuck you all right you're not gonna rape me i'm gonna rape you i'm just like holy shit Susanna. that's fucking badass you show that demon fuck that demon <laughs> So no, yeah, she's a she's a badass character for sure. But oh. um going back to like the <laughs> you 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 described it really well. I'm glad you did cuz I was trying to formulate that shit in my brain where it's like we got to go to this timeline but we have to make sure it's before Balzar shakes him down. We have to make sure it's before Mr. Tower, you know, like after Mr. Tower wants to it, sell it. Um and I think it's just written more complicated yes, than it actually than it really is. is. Well, and so, he has to do it in, like, a conversational way, too, so it's kind of harder to explain it that way, but, I mean, I know, and your manager maybe has touched on this as well, but people who I've talked to have read this have talked about, like, the time-traveling aspect of it, and it becomes more of a thing, like, later in the series, like, the time-traveling, like, sci-fi aspect of it, and, like, we got a little bit of that in the beginning, a few books. But yeah, now it's like becoming really apparent where it's like this shit is gonna be like a really big part of this where like they're they're gonna have to jump from timeline to timeline to achieve yeah. their goals. I'm waiting. I'm, I hope Pennywise shows up. Right. Right. That'd be cool. Or be like sick. other Stephen King villains. Yeah. Like Jack, if Jack Torrance showed up, yeah. that'd be. Oh shit! That wrote, they did mention the name Torrance. In oh, yeah. this section, it was when they were in New York. I forget exactly what it was. I think it was, it was a name of of something. I f I forget. But Torrance is in The Shining. It's you know Jack Torrance is uh the main the the father mm -hmm. in, in that story. So I was like, is it, that's another reference. I was like, fuck yeah, that's cool. I love The Shining. Yeah, I think it's yeah. really cool that he references other books. I mean, obviously, when we get to those books, it'll be cool to kind of see how they tie together but um yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you oh no you know you're good you, no not at all i didn't have anything else um we like kind of 
we kind of covered the flower section in the in the to- the second toad ash episode. I don't really have anything else to cover well, from like the one. main thing. I just have a couple like prediction questions. But if there's anything you wanted to talk yeah, about, yeah, the only the last thing I'd want to talk about is toward the end of the rose thing where so Susanna and Oi stay behind and Eddie, yeah. Jake, and Roland go to get the rose because right. when they go into the dream, Susanna has her legs, but they think that Roland thinks that's the Maya. Mia side of her taking most of control so she th- believes she has legs that's why she has legs in the dream so when Susanna loses her legs when she goes dormant and I think that's like the time frame showing that in the real world Maya got up uh, controlled Susanna's body went ate a bunch of shit and then went back to sleep and when she went back to sleep she Susanna lost the legs in the dream yeah. so and then, so we get the rose section that shows like love and and co- coincidences that aren't good coincidences that aren't coincidences. So we see a lot of good luck happening. And then on Susanna, who's far enough away from the rose, is seeing is scared shitless because she sees like a dead man with his chest sewed up, just standing there naked, balls dick hanging out just staring at her and she starts screaming and then they see the the rest of the crew comes to run run back to her and you see a, 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 Stephen King describes like the little a little girl with like her head like bashed in yeah and it's just like holy shit so you get so you do you get your yin and your yang in this same section I thought that was very interesting what did what do you think about about that about that yeah i didn't even think about that perspective i think that's definitely a cool way to look at it where yeah you have this flower that kind of represents good things good coincidences and then you have Susanna who gets abandoned by mia loses her legs and is hanging out with all these fucking zombies (laughs) yeah (laughs) but yeah it was another one of those stephen king moments that's burned in my brain like the guy with his chest sewed up and then the girl with her head smashed in um which, you know, adds to the intensity level of, like, their Toe Dash experience. And, like, when they're jumping from reality to reality, I think it's... They're going to see more of this crazy shit that might not be friendly. So. Yeah. Because, like, for me, it almost makes me think that, like, the Toe Dash area is, like, the purgatory. is like, the right. in-between yes. worlds. And the rose and the turtle lead to some sort of heaven... Uh, which is probably my guess it's like the top of the dark tower, but I don't, I don't know for sure. So it's just, there's a lot of interesting moves going on here. And uh, last thing I want to talk about is we get Roland's past with this old quartet finished, right? Jamie get, uh, we, when Roland first goes into the second dream section, yep. Uh, it goes through the war with Gilead and he sees all his friends die. And so Jamie, who was with him in 4.5, dies. I can't remember how he died. But I guess it doesn't really matter. He just got shot or something. But then what was really sad is that Alen, who was like coming back from something to warn Roland and them, calling out to them, uh, like, you get to, you see... Roland and Cuthbert think don't know it's Alain and they think it's an enemy and they start shooting and then they killed their friend. Yeah, no, it's and rough. I was like, oh shit! And then Cuthbert, Cuthbert dies too uh, later on with the with the Roland's horn. That's like you can have this horn back, Mister Fancy Pants, Mister Gunslinger, when you uh, you get off my cold dead fingers. And then Roland's like, it like he's like looking at it and and this bloodied puddle of of Cuthbert's blood and so I know like the two books ago we were like I wonder how Stephen King's gonna wrap up uh the old quartet story like is there gonna be another long story Roland's gonna do or what and so I'm glad we got a conclusion to that now because we only got two more books and then so we got to see the fall of Gilead uh in this in this section I don't think they'll go more into detail about it he might so the gist is they were outnumbered and they refused to surrender. Everyone dies. Gilead's defeated. Roland survives somehow. Don't know how. What do you think about that? 
Yeah, that's the part that's still, like, we got closure with, like you said, the Katet, and now it makes sense why he wrote book 4.5 and had Jamie come with him on the Skin Man journey um, to kind of talk about why Jamie was there and, like, why Jamie is one of his friends. Um, but, yeah, we ha we'll have to find out how Roland survives this ordeal. I'm, I'm curious to see how he does. I almost wonder if it's kind of like a Gandalf situation where, you know, he's thousands of years old. He's been alive for a long time and maybe he does die in this, but he comes back because whatever power wants him to find the tower or something. But mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't seem I... like there's, it doesn't seem like there's a way for him to get out of this situation, at least for now. Obviously I hope that Stephen King will have some closure with how he, got out of that um but what do you yeah. think the only thing i could think of is that roland would have to get knocked out somehow uh oh, yeah that's either it. either and then the war is over and he's like well guess i'll just keep going for the tower i guess fuck it yeah because at that either, point there's, there's yeah. nothing left i mean there yeah i mean either either that or stephen king's gonna write like roland in all his fury killed over two twenty thousand people all by himself. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it became a it's god. Absolutely <laughs> insane. Power yeah. level over nine. So yeah, so it'll be it'll be interesting. And out of out of all out of everything in this first section, those all those points that we just talked about are the most interesting to me. Though we can get to those questions. That yeah, you, that you want to do. Yeah, this this first question I think we can kind of skip. Um, we kind of already talked about it, but the second one it's like, what do you think the wolves do to the kids? So obviously we talked about how Ooh. they when they come back they grow. They're also kind of stupid. Um, it's kind of weird that they give them back after they whatever they do to them. But yeah, what what do you think they they do? So, okay. So if we look at what happens to them, they so they obviously they they lose a lot of their mental capacity. So they get stupid. Right. Uh, their bodies start growing and ache pain, like growing, and it's painful. Yeah. And they're they say their skulls expand too. So uh, if I was if I was like a biologist and knew more about like the bot human body, maybe I could think of something. Uh, more accurate to probably what's going on, but I think that they're like they're sucking some sort of some sort of either biological thing out of them, like some liquid something super advanced that is so minuscule that we wouldn't really that me and you wouldn't even know about it. Maybe some person who's in the field could think of something better like do they mess with their dna take strands of their dna out and do something with it uh and maybe that's why the wolves of the cow aren't human because they take certain dna strands out and it has these weird side effects and then when they because also when these people get to like 30 i think they they just end up dying from what like a heart attack or something or yeah right? they they die so, earlier and they also a lot of them commit suicide i think it was like 50 percent, like one in two of them kill themselves yeah. yeah so we know that it's traumatized what they do is traumatizing enough for them to want to kill themselves and we know that it's it's uh harmful enough that it, it breaks down them mentally and breaks their body physically uh and and so and also like and then in their 30s they'll just die for for a heart attack or whatever so how do you get a heart attack all right mostly high stress uh cholesterol is very high blood clots uh near the heart so i don't know i don't maybe i'm overthinking it or not but so I think it's something to do with with DNA is my is my is my first guess and my second guess is going to be some sort of life uh spiritual force that they're sucking out of them. But I'm going to lean more on the first one. I'm going to say DNA. 
Yeah, I uh, I thought the same thing where I was like, they probably take away something from them, whether it's biological. I, I was leaning, I thought it would be more of like a spiritual thing because we're kind of, I felt like we were kind of going down that path, but it's also Stephen King. He tends to be more like, you know, realistic. So yeah, it might be more like a DNA or like biological thing that they take away. But it's, I honestly, I really don't know what they do to them. I'm just kind of spitballing. Yeah. <laughs> And with Stephen King, it's rarely straightforward. And obviously, we've seen stories where kids get like kidnapped and stuff. But very rarely in these stories, like, do the kidnappers give the kids back one, and then two, the kids just grow really big and are dumb. It doesn't. So I'm really interested to see what they do to them. It's probably going to be really fucked up, but. Um, uh oh yeah, yeah. it's gonna be so fun. i can already tell this is gonna get <laughs> fucked but yeah i they wanted to it. bring that up because uh i mean i was just spitballing as well um with with this i was kind of leaning to the spiritual thing like you were talking about but yeah i just didn't honestly don't know um you know but, what uh, yeah go ahead i was like you know what the cotet's gonna do to the wolves of the cala huh. they're they're gonna thunder clap them cheeks <laughs> boy <laughs> man you were ready to you were thinking about that one for a while huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna go kill myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the thunderclap <laughs> name is funny <laughs> it probably wasn't so, funny when he wrote it but like from a <laughs> modern perspective it's pretty funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> nice but um it's also yeah, just another question. Yeah, yeah. So oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Or uh, I'll go with this last question here. So, yeah. So, do you think? Obviously, Susanna has this demon baby. Do you think she's gonna have the baby? One and two. Do you think the baby is gonna be born in this book or the next book? And I bring it up because the next book is called Susanna's Song. So obviously, it's kind of probably at least yeah. somewhat focused on her. I would think. Um, but like <laughs> the, uh, it's interesting now that we have a confirmation that it's a demon baby. So like now I'm like thinking about, okay, when is it going to get born? Like, what are the implications? But what do you think? I think definitely next book. And so I think the C, cause it's a C plot in this book. So I think that at the end of this book, maybe the Eddie and Jake will be aware of it, but I don't think it's going to be born till next book. And the reason for that is cause, so when they're near the rose, right in this first section they're talking about how like it's it's playing a song like a melody that's very loving and they love it yeah. so i think that in order for them to get to the dark tower at the end of the next book susanna is gonna sing a song <laughs> or do something <laughs> she i mean she sang in this book already like she was like singing a tune and they're like what are you singing there and she's like oh some my grand peppies what is saying on the plantation you know mm. so it's like so it's already building building up. Like, obviously, since we know the next book is called Susanna's Song, uh, we can have these predictions. But like when this book first came out, who who would have known? Right. You know? So it's like not only did Susanna already sing a song in this book, the Rose sings a song. And the next book's called Susanna's Song. So, and I think so. Stephen King's building up the C plot with the demon baby and Susanna for the next book. So, I think this C plot is going to be uh, a plot next book. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I agree with you. Right. I figured with the title, you know, this uh, demon baby will be next, but. Um, I could definitely see it going like a tragic route where like the demon baby is born, she has to sacrifice herself to like kill it, and then they move on. Yeah. And then the final book, The Dark Tower. So it's just this book, the Susanna song, and then The Dark Tower. I know. And that's probably gonna be the last book. I'm already prepared for it to be trippy as balls. I know, because this all... is already <laughs> becoming, yeah, trippy. Um, I'm yeah. glad we have this book club to like go over it again because it keeps it straight in my brain. Um, I try my best to like, you know, understand and like remember it. But whenever these kinds of sequences happens, it, like it, it was the same when we read Dune and they were like fucking doing like the universe trip in the desert, and I was like, oh, all yeah. right, I'm like, I'm like trying to focus, but it's just, 
The Queen's yeah. Heiserarchy. Heiserarch. <laughs> the the car car. Oh wait, oh wrong book. Yeah, the you know. Wrong book. It yeah. it interests me, but it's not like that interesting to me. So I, sometimes my eyes glaze over a little bit in those sections. But yeah, um, well, I'm yeah, I'm glad. Ahead. Well, I'm glad because like we both focus on different things. So we because yeah. like I love I love this. This is my shit. Gotcha. So good. Yeah. You're my yin. You're my yin to my yang. Yeah, dude. I'm the. <laughs> you're the flower to my dead zombie people. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're, you're my you're my Maya to my. <laughs> Suzanne. Uh, to <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, well, I gotta piss. Yeah, I was gonna say that's all I have uh, for this section. Um, I can wrap it up here if you have nothing else. Yeah, sounds good. I'm just gonna say smell you later, Red, because I'm gonna go pee, so All right. I'll see you in the next video. Right, <laughs> you can out close here. out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everybody, thanks for listening. If you uh, stayed with us this while to, to listen to this pod, but we appreciate it. If you have any feedback for us, feel free to get, leave us a comment, and we'd love if you could you know, give us a like, give us a review on any podcast app. Um, if there's anything we didn't cover in here, again, we kind of cover the things that we think are interesting, but if there's something that you wanted us to cover, uh, you know, feel free to let us know and we'll, we'll talk about covering it in, in a future video. But we'll see you next time for part two of Wolves of the Kala.